Judges chapter 5, verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord powers, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of the villages in Israel, then shall the people of the Lord powers go down to the gates. John chapter 14, verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim Rekahakwadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles and faithful servants of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach this gospel and push this gospel to the four corners of the earth. Peace and salutations and greetings, global elect, the house of Israel, building. Tabernacle David, I refer to them as the carpenters. Shalom. Now, I wanted to express, I wanted to express the gratitude to Yahweh Bashim Yomashim Bashim Kakwadash earlier. Uh, right now, the time is uh, time is three fifty two a.m. And earlier, I would say before sometime between, I, I can't say what time, sometime, but I know I was awakened at the hour of maybe two, a quarter to three. I was awakened by Yahweh Bashim Shah. But sometime between midnight, uh, yeah, midnight, um, some, <laughs> sometime between 12 a.m. and 3 a.m. this morning, a few hours ago, I had a dream. Okay. And we know that Yahweh Shimon Shah brings us dreams. Okay. Pursuant to Acts 2.17 in the book of Joel, right? I believe it's Joel chapter 2. And it was int- it was and it was a quick dream. It was really really quick, really quick. And um, it's interesting that he showed me this dream because there are a lot of individuals that fall into the gap of what this dream was about. Those are those individuals who have the knowledge of truth and understand it. But they are waiting. And what what they're doing, which is something extremely dangerous, is they are waiting. Some people are, and you know these kinds of people, some people will know something is coming. They won't prepare. They'll put it off. And they'll wait and wait and wait to enough stuff happen in their face, then they get on the damn road to try to do something that is not a good idea. Why? Because in the meantime, while you're waiting, number one, you're not repenting. Number number two, you're showing the Lord, you're, you're showing the Lord your pride. What I mean by that? Because you, you're going to try to deliver yourself some other kind of way. The scripture warns us about that. You're not repenting. You're not trying to rehearse the righteous acts. You, you you are trying to do it the way you feel you need to do it to continue to be wicked and to continue to walk in darkness. Then when the shit hit the fan, then you gonna run over there right quick. Guess what? The elevator going to close right in your damn face. And this 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 is not hard because, you know, we, we see examples of this all the time in our daily lives, you know. 
If you wait around to pay a damn light bill, you wait around to call the people to say, hey, I don't have enough money to pay the light bill. All that damn waiting you could do, your ass could be in the dark. Because you can wait and you can say, I'm going to call them at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Shit. Then, all of a sudden, your damn power, your, your phone don't work. Or Not that you didn't pay the bill, but they have a phone outage in the area. Then I'm going to go on up there and catch me a ride. And by the time you get in touch with somebody to get over that shit, they let lock the damn door. They count down the damn money. At the light bill, please. Now what? You just ain't got no damn power. When they, and by the time you get back home, the damn power's off. Then the money that you don't have for the, to, to pay the bill is added to a damn reconnection fee. See what I mean? It's the same hard. All of us damn near have experienced this, this in so many form of fashion, either your light bill or your damn water bill. Okay, so let's go on. This is not a long lesson at all. It is really a testimonial. Okay, um, 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 about the dream that is that Yahweh Shemeshai brought to me, but I'm just gonna grab a few scriptures, and we're gonna, but we're gonna work on it. Okay, um, right now the doors of mercy are closing. Um, they have not closed, but time is so extremely short. If you're going to, uh, uh, if 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 anybody's ever gonna get it together, okay, we already believe that. The whole collector is nearly sealed, and I say nearly sealed because these these prophecies are still going out. Okay, um, these prophecies are still going out, and we are aware of the knowledge of truth, and we have the knowledge of truth. Those of us that have it. Okay, now remember the law of power. Yahweh Bishim Shah tells us that if we draw not unto Him, we He will draw not unto us. How do we draw not unto Him through His Word? Okay. Through his word, I first need to state that you Native Americans, so-called, so-called Hispanic, so-called Latinos, okay, are the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? And we serve a God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. His name is Yahweh. The world calls him Jesus. It's like the world calls him God, okay? But his name is Yahweh. Yahweh means Yah, means he. Allah means he to be, he exists. Okay. Yahweh Shah's name, my Lord and Savior in ancient Hebrew. Yah means he, Yahweh Shah means our salvation, our deliverer. Is he not our deliverer, our redeemer? Okay, so, you know, so anyway, I, I just want to state that up front. Raka HaKwadash, Raka is spirit. Kwadash means holy in ancient Hebrew. Let's grab a few scriptures. I didn't want this to be long at all. Now, our opening preset, preset was what? Judges 5.11. Let's return there. <clears throat> Judges chapter 5, verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of the archers. <coughs> who is who is who is who is they in the scripture? They that are delivered from the noise of the archers. Now we know that archers is a man that shoot an arrow. Okay. And it says they that are delivered from the noise, that noise, okay, so we're speaking of World War Three, we're speaking of when the nuclear missiles, the plagues come down on Babylon the Great. Okay. You can read more about that in Second Tim Slaki, Second Timothy three and ten and twelve. Okay. Um yes. Okay. Um in fact, let's go there now because I might that that might be a little off. Let's go there now. I click Second Timothy three and ten. Uh, give me a second. As milk. <laughs> uh, 
<coughs> there it is right there. Slide to the top of your screen. Second Peter 3 and 10. It's lock you. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. That's that word noise again. And the elements, elements, are you not made of elements? Is not the earth made of elements, the trees, um, the livestock, animals, man and beast made of elements? The atmosphere is made of elements. Okay. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away. With a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Let's go. Let's go down. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, we're speaking of Second Peter chapter three verse eleven at the top of your screen. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, burned up. What men of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening into the coming of the day of our power, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. And that is when Yahweh Shem and Bashai, the elect of the house of Israel, the 144,000, will establish righteousness upon the earth in the kingdom. You can read more about that in Revelation, socket in Michael chapter 4, verse 1 on down. Okay. okay, because we are going to rule the hopeful elected house of Israel are going to rule. Uh, uh, they're going to rule as an heir to his throne, spoken of in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Okay, and they're going to be judging the 12 tribes of Israel, right? Okay, so now, um, and also, they're also going to be establishing the law, establishing righteousness, to the children of men that are there as well, okay, in the kingdom, okay. Now, so as we see here, so, and look at that, there's a picture there. Um, I, right now, I, I gain understanding through the scriptures, not through a picture, okay, uh, because all things are now spiritual, and sometimes the pictures don't line up with what I know things to be and behave in the way that they were meant to be, which is spiritual. God, uh, uh, John 4.24, God is a spirit. We must, we must, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay. So that has to be applied as well, okay, to 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 any type of picture. Usually on YouTube, you see these, these Christian pastors and young Christian ministers and when I say young, I mean they can't be no older than 30 or 35. And they try to understand the prophecies of Bob, and they got this damn big dragon with some horns flying around as a cartoon. And, and then some other damn, uh, some other, uh, some other uh, uh, object or that has a whole bunch of damn eyes in it and shit because they're not spiritual. They can't receive nor understand the gospel. So, they look at shit in a carnal manner, uh, and that why that, that's why you know when they explain these little YouTube shorts and shit with these cartoons and animated illustrations and shit, you be like, what the fuck? <laughs> because they can't they can't understand it, you know. The beast that the beast that John saw coming out of the waters, okay, with seven heads and ten horns. And you look at, here you is, you see a damn picture or illustration of a damn dragon with all these damn heads and shit and 
you be like, and there's a woman riding upon the back of it with a golden cup in her hand. Where the hell? All those are symbols. They mean things. Okay. He can't understand the scriptures. Psalm 147, 19 tells us that. He showed this word unto Jacob. Not he. He showed this word unto Jacob. His judgments and statutes unto Israel. He has never dealt so with any other nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Say la. Right? Amos 3 and 2, of all, the of all the families of the earth, Jacob is the only people I've ever known. Okay? And in Amos 3 and 1, it's, it starts off by saying all the tribes are guilty. So as you can see here, they can't understand it. That's why they be trying to make sense of what they see, and they ain't going to never get it. Why? Because it's not meant for them to get. The Torah, which is referred to the, as the Bible, is written to the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 tribes of Israel only. Now, let me let me just, I'm not going to do anything long here at all. Um, I'm going to go back to Revelation um, 11, 5, 11, and then we're going to get maybe two or three more scriptures, and uh, that's going to be that. Because of that, y'all, Bishop Rashad, has been laid about four or five other videos on me in the spirit, and I'll be loving it. So, you know, hey. Um, now, because... You know, when the Lord ain't dealing with you, either you're not plugged in or you've been plugged out. One out of two. Now, Judges 5, 11, they that are delivered from the noise of the archers. So we know we're speaking of World War Three. Okay. Um, we know we're speaking of when the nuclear missile is coming down upon Babylon the Great to destroy it. So who are delivered from the noise of the archers? The remnants, the hopeful elect. Matthew 24, 31 says... And the angel of the Lord sounded with a loud voice and said, and the Lord said, Go gather my elect from the four winds of the earth. So he's speaking of the 144,000. Um, the the, the one-third part of Israel spoken of in Zechariah 13 and 8. That's what we're speaking of. They take part in the first resurrection pursuant to Revelation chapter 20, verse 5, and that death has no power over them. The Lord says this is the first resurrection, right? This is the first resurrection, and the rest of the dead did not live until the thousand years were finished. Who is the rest of the dead? The two-third parts of Israel, spoken of as well in Zechariah 13 and 8. Okay, now let's continue. They that are delivered from the noise of the archers, okay, they that are delivered from war, out of World War Three. in the place of drawing water, that means what? Slavery. There, there, that's here, Babylon Greek. There they shall rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord's power, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of the villages in Israel. Okay, so Yahweh Shai commanded us to go to the highways and hedges and preach his gospel and bid them to the marriage, pursuant to Matthew 22 and 9, Luke 14, 23, and Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20. He also told us to prophesy against Mount Seir in Ezekiel 35, verse 2. Okay. He also told us to teach. He also told us to read and study to show ourselves approved unto God in 2 Timothy 2, 15. He also told us to pray without ceasing in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. He also told us in Luke 21, 36, to watch ye therefore and pray always that we may be accounted worthy to escape the things coming upon the heavens of the earth, escaping that damn nuclear fire. Okay, so we are rehearsing the righteous acts. Okay, we're also not recognizing birthdays because nobody knows when the hell you was born. Okay, we're also not recognizing these pagan holidays like Juneteenth because Juneteenth says that um, the slaves were freed in 1865 and in 1890. We know that Yahweh Shemim is our only redeemer, right? Spoken of in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. So only he can redeem us from the state of captivity, right? We're also not joining in and being around and being in company with uh, the sinner. Psalm 101, blessed are the men that do not walk or sit in the council of the wicked or the ungodly. Okay? Or sit in, in, sit in the seat with the scornful, sit in judgment with sinners. Okay? So... These are some. These are just a few of those things that Yahweh Shemesh has commanded us to do, and they are called righteous acts. Okay, so let's get Jeremiah three fourteen. We're gonna close out. Okay, 
Yeah. The dream that I had earlier was in reference to those individuals who are scurrying. They're moving quickly because now they see that shit about to hit the damn fan. Everything about to start happening. And another set of prophecies are now occurring and coming into effect. Now they're trying to run through the background and try to get this and get that right. And just that's not going to work. We are here to rehearse the righteous acts of the law of prophecy of the justified living. So if you're one of these individuals, listen to my voice, that's doing that, stop. Go to Yahweh B'Shem Mishai. Speak with him in prayer. If there's something or some habit or some issue that you're still dealing with that you're not putting forth effort like you should, Mark 9, 29, Matthew 17, 21 says, Some things only come out by prayer and fasting. First Thessalonians 5, 17 says, Pray without ceasing. So you need to get to work. You need to get hard down. Okay. And you need to, uh, I ask y'all, but you shy to strengthen your faith and give you more faith to endure to the end. Okay. So at the end of your life, period. Because the end, end, you might not be able to end, end, come over, okay? So now let's just get Jeremiah three fourteen. in this video is at its end, okay? Turn as in, uh, turn as in return. Return or backsliding Israel. Return or backsliding children, said the Lord Paul. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city into a family, and I will bring you unto Zion. The word Zion means... Remembrance, okay, and remembrance of what the Abrahamic covenant, okay, remembrance of what, okay, the the oath that was that Yahweh B'shem swore to our the our fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I didn't want this lesson to be long at all. All I wanted to state out to put out to you is repent, do it now, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Anybody trying to wait around is trying is doing it some other kind of way to not enter into the straight gate. So in Matthew seven thirteen, you're trying to come up some other kind of way. And that's pride. That's pride. In other words, you're standing in your and that's also blasphemy as well, because you don't know what your outcome is going to be. And, you know, but there's a, there are things that you can do now to more solidify. Okay. You're, you're more solidify yourself being in a better standing. I ain't gonna say it's a good standing. Being in a better standing than where you are now and you are playing with fire. Okay, so I wanna give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bishim, Shai, Bishim, Kakudash, double honors to the others in possible way. Most of them were well. Peace and salutation, hope is like the house of the Israel. Repent now. Make a start today. Go to Yahweh Shem Shai in prayer. And and I also say that as well for those of us who are, were just awakened very recently. Know what we got to do. We're waiting around. What you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for a damn big bull to come out the damn woods and trample your ass? Are you waiting for a mountain lion to come out the woods and run you down and run you to death and bite you in the damn neck? Are you waiting to cross the street? Looking at a car going down the street, striking fire on the ground, and then a damn bus turn the corner and run your ass over. What are you waiting on? These are judgments the Lord says. Start at my house, the house of Israel. Slay both the elderly and the little ones. What? I mean, what are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? Are you waiting for a damn, a damn uh, a buzzard to swoop down and pick your eyes out? What are you waiting on? Where you waiting on? Where you waiting on? Excuse me. Where you waiting for? <laughs> Until the next time. Shalom.